But to this now, South Africa's nursing profession appears to be under some kind of friction uh, from several factors that uh, many observe. And they're predicting that this is building up into a crisis. Now, you've got an aging workforce, you've got controversies surrounding the training, the accreditation of institutions, the career prospects, all making for other interesting reading. But having trained nurses who are now idling at home amidst a staffing shortage may also sound rather bizarre, right? So joining us now to discuss how South Africa is dealing with all this and uh, finding solutions to the uh, training crisis, to the institutional crisis, uh, is uh, the uh, nurse uh, academic and research professor uh, at, uh, that is uh, uh, Professor Judith Bruce, rather. Uh, we also have uh, Simpio Gata, chairperson of the Democratic Nurses Organization of South Africa in Kauteng. We are hoping that we will be joined by the president of the Young Nurses Indaba Trade Union, Deratum Tunzi, as soon as uh, she's able to connect uh, tonight. But uh, we'll get the conversation going uh, so far. And of course, we have reached out as well to the South African Nursing Council uh, uh, so far, and uh, no response has actually uh, been given towards our request to have them as part of this conversation. But maybe to kick off the conversation, uh, Professor uh, Judy, let me begin with you. I mean, I, I, like I'm saying, it, it would be bizarre for us uh, to be talking of nurses sitting idling at a home while we are saying there are shortages also at the same time. So uh, I suppose the first question would be, is there a need in South Africa for trained nurses in greater numbers who have uh, specialized skills and experience. And certainly, good evening, uh, Tabo, and to your um, viewers. Uh, there definitely is a great need for an increase in, in the nursing numbers. And, and perhaps I should just share a bit of history around what contributed or started the, con the, the contribution to the decline in nursing numbers. So it's all good to blame historical factors, but many years ago <coughs> in the mid-1990s, uh, the merger, the rationalization of nursing colleges um, led to a significant decline of nursing numbers over about a 10-year period. Now, although we've recovered from, uh, from that um, onslaught of, of loading of numbers, we're not nearly as close to the, the nursing numbers that's required currently. So the current predictions uh, of the shortfall is estimated to be between 30 and 62,000 nurses in the country, uh, and 50% of those are in the professional nurse category. Now, it's all good and well for institutions to be training more nurses, but if there aren't mm -hmm. enough community service posts or and permanent posts once they complete their community service, then, of course, that exacerbates the, the nursing shortage. And so there's a variety of factors that we need to look at to really decide whether the shortage of nurses is real or not in this country. Yeah. Now, Simpia, recently at the Hospital Association of South Africa Conference 2022, it emerged that health professionals, particularly the private sector, are accusing the South African Nursing Council, and I must quote here verbatim, uh, of... Uh, blocking the training of new nurses by preventing private hospitals from taking on more students. I, I, is this factually correct? Well, thanks, Tao, and good evening to the listeners. Well, uh, Tabo, the current uh, move as far as nursing education is concerned will ensure that, uh, you know, uh, all qualifications that are offered in nursing are compliant uh, in terms of the Council for Higher Education and uh, part of this reason means that uh, now you will get uh, the curriculum being approved by the Council of Higher Education and not necessarily SANC because the challenge that we have had is that we have had SANC doing a dual role here, which is that of accrediting uh, colleges and also approving curriculum. And that is what has caused the friction that is there in nursing in that uh, you had nurses like myself, who is a product of the University of Johannesburg. You also have nurses who are coming from the government colleges. And currently, from where we are sitting now, those nurses uh, who are 
who have trained in the colleges are sitting at NQF level six because they've got diplomas, while I am sitting with an NQF level eight because I possess a degree. Now, this is the gap that we're trying to bridge, which will also give dignity uh, to nursing. This uh, thing of thinking that uh, nursing must just be produced willy-nilly gave rise to the the bogus nursing colleges. Now, these changes are doing away with the bogus nursing colleges, also doing away with the institutions that uh, were not properly following the processes of training nurses in that there were gaps that were there where nurses would not do the nurses that are produced outside these uh, institutions that I've mentioned, especially yeah, yeah. in the private sector, yeah. you find that those nurses are not compliant with what is required in training. So it is not factually correct. What needs to happen here is that the curriculum must be approved by the Council of Higher Education yeah. and not necessarily by the Nursing Council. So, so, so exactly explain to me then what is the private sector trying to do here? They're trying to get the council to, to give them a go-ahead to take as many numbers as, as they want to take them through their nursing uh, colleges and not follow this reform process that is now being proposed since 1994? Well, Tabo, the unfortunate part uh, which I know may put us at odds with some of these private healthcare groups as a nursing union is the fact that the commercialization of the profession gave rise uh, arose from in the in the private healthcare groups in the private hospitals in that you find that they are accredited maybe to train 300 nurses and you find that they actually take double the number they would have about 600 and this is what has actually also created a conducive environment in terms of compromising the end product which is the the quality of the nurses that are produced by these colleges so our view is that let's allow due processes to happen, the Council for Higher Education to approve uh, the curriculum. Though we are not happy with the pace of approving the, the curriculum because the, what Prof was saying, the, 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 the challenges we are going to face in terms of the aging population and the shortages will also be attributed to the slow pace because currently as things stand, we are at a gap of not taking uh, student nurses uh, to begin their training right. for about three years. And okay. the challenge we have, Tabo, now, research tells us that we currently we are facing about 5.9 million nurses uh, shortage globally. Yeah. And in the next 10 to 15 years, we'll have a shortage of about 13 million. So this is a cause for concern. But what is important is that the nurses we produce must be of quality in the interest of the public as well, so that we know that when you have a family member who's in hospital, they will be treated by competent nurses. Lerato is now joining us. I appreciate your time, Lerato. Uh, she's with uh, the, uh, the Young Nurses in Daba Trade Union. Lerato, talk to us about uh, uh, the conversation that is being had around the professionalization uh, of the nursing uh, uh, pro pro profession, which has created some kind of friction. So there seems to have been an agreement within the nursing sector that there needs to be some reforms done to the training and the education uh, in terms of the qualification itself, but there needs to be some reforms also done to institutions that offer these programs as far as their accreditation. Uh, and uh, uh, Sibir has just raised another issue of a moratorium that was... Uh, uh, issued uh, which uh, seem to have been lifted now. As the young nurses in Daba Trade Union, are you also in agreement with this move towards the reform of the nursing profession? Um, good evening to, uh, to all the viewers at home. I think what must be noted is the fact that transitioning of nursing education from health into higher education is long overdue. I think as, as a union we've come up very strongly to say this is something that should have been achieved immediately at the dawn of democracy. Unfortunately uh, the snail pace that has been there has led us to where we are today. Seeing the move starting to happen gradually 
uh, relinquishing of that responsibility from the Department of Health, which is not really their competency of training any person in higher education. Really, it's, it's, it's not yet. There's still a tug of war. Uh, Department of Health is still very much controlling um, the funding of nursing education up to today. So that transition is very slow. And in, in as far as South African Nursing Council, totally exiting their role of regulating nursing education and training. It's also another type of war. I think the South African Nursing Council is a regulatory body that should be focusing on practice. It's really so, it's actually having a separation anxiety where it needs really to hand over to the CHE. But currently as we sit and we are looking at the situation, we are finding that our classrooms have only 50 learners, 50 students. In, in, in one class or even less than 100, which tells us that the output that we must envisage in the next year as they complete their third year or in the coming years will be very dwindling. And that's our biggest worry. We have a big crisis. I mean, the ratios that have been thrown around of one nest is to 260, if not more, are really shocking. Um, and, and I think it's something that we must really prioritize. We need more nurses hands on deck, but we as well saying, the private sector must not come here and cry foul. They've been charging our brothers and sisters exorbitant amounts to even do courses that are not even accredited by the South African Nursing Council, like pre-nursing, ancillary nursing. Yes, we need nurses, but we need quality nurses. We need people that are going to go under proper, regulated by higher education qualification for the betterment of our health care. But, um, you know, there's a lot of you know, dissatisfaction within the private uh, space. And I don't think we're going to miss our words. As, 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 as a union, we are actually saying, yes, they must form the current transition and they must follow it to the latter. And the yeah. pricing, that is the problem, must definitely be looked so, at. So, it so, doesn't so. make sense to them. So, so, so let's look at this question, the rate of the intake that you are raising. So, South African Council, uh, the Nursing Council says these are the factors that they take into consideration on the student intake. One, physical resources, the number and capacity of the classrooms, including classroom equipment and so on and so forth. Clinical facilities, the number and size of health establishments that are used for clinical placement of, of students. And then, of course, human resource lecturers uh, uh, to student ratio. Uh, this is all that they are taking into consideration. And in line with that, hence we are seeing the kind of, of intake that we are seeing. Look, I think nursing colleges and SANC are really being uh, are misleading the country and they're misleading all of us. And I'm speaking from a point of privilege because um, as a former uh, nursing lecturer at one of the biggest nursing colleges in the in the province, not if not in the country, I can tell you currently colleges would be sitting with more than 100 educators at their payroll. So why would you want to have 100 students in a class? Is there such a thing where you can have educators where ratio one is to one or one is to two? That's absolutely absurd. We've got enough capacity of colleges. In fact, others are even closed in, our, in, 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 in Houteng as the biggest hub of nursing training. So with those uh, 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 um, insights and all those reasons that they're actually making mention of, I'm really not sure if one has to properly go down and investigate. I mean, we do have adequate resources. Students are paying, are paying exorbitant tuition fees. We've seen students' fees being moved just in this year from 4,000 to more than 11,000, over and above that they're actually on a bogus bogus buzzer system when they're supposed to be on on, on NS funds. And that is why as a trade union we see it fit that it's it's time that we give rise to actually a student a forum or organization that is going to actually champion the challenges that these students are experiencing on a year on year, which is textbooks, no resources, where there is actually a budget to do that. So I think SANC is really being uh, uh, dishonest and, and the reasons that they're giving us are really, uh, well, does not suffice with us. Yeah. Professor uh, Bruce, let, let's bring you in here. The question of the intake, uh, one, I want you to address that question of the intake and why, why there's, there's been those bottlenecks in, in the numbers. I think we used to, uh, according to these numbers and stats, take about 200 or so. Uh, now we are only taking 50 in a classroom, which is uh, particularly not sufficient enough. Two, the question of um, the, 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 the snail pace of transition and, and what is behind that. And then maybe we'll take the other issues. But let's start with that. 
Okay, <clears throat> thank you. So the first issue uh, around the, the limiting of the numbers, the, the one of the reasons that the Nursing Council puts forward is that um, they, they have to look at the training facilities. Remember, nursing education is not just about teaching and training in the classroom, but also in the clinical facilities. And in the bigger context, in the bigger scheme of things, there has not been the sufficient enough expansion of health facilities um, no modernization at all of health facilities. And if you look at the general decay in the public health system in particular, all of these factors do not make a, a, a conducive um, environment for training nurses. Now, although um, it may sound like I'm batting for the nursing council and I'm not, those are some of the factors that we have to consider in accrediting um, uh, nursing colleges. However, I must add, that um, when we look at the limit limiting numbers and what has happened with the amalgamation of colleges, the key mistake that has been made is that there has not been a recalibration of numbers um, that the, the, the merged institutions now must produce. And so the council has not taken into account uh, an instance where one college, for example, had an intake of 300 nurses. Now in the amalgamated scenario, um, far fewer enrollments then happen at those colleges. So there is a big problem, and we definitely are heading for a major crisis, um, not only in numbers, but also in skills, um, nursing skills, particularly in specializations. Yeah. The question of uh, lecturers, right? Uh, the, the council is saying here that they need lecturers who, who will be licensed to practice as nurses, but also you cannot have lecturers teaching uh, uh, the, the, the same level programs, outcomes that they, they, they have achieved, right? They, they need to be a little bit higher, in other words, in terms of their qualification. Hence this conversation around them having mm. a master's uh, to be able to teach. How true is that and how relevant is that in, 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 in what we want to see happen here? Yes, so, so Tabo, that's not entirely new in higher education. And it's also not entirely correct that all lecturers would need a master's degree. The principle is that if you have, if you're teaching in basic or undergraduate courses, you have to have a qualification higher than the level at which you're teaching in, in the particular program. So, for example, if you're teaching at a level six, you must have a higher level qualification. Of course, that makes absolute sense. Now, in postgraduate um, um, education, um, you have to have a qualification at the same level uh, that you're teaching. So if you're at a master's level or doctoral level, you need to have a, a, a qualification equivalent to that level. However, the Council on Higher Education does make provision for 50% of the staff having a qualification higher than, than the qualification you teach at postgraduate. So it's not completely correct. However, the, the, the trend internationally is that all nurse educators should have a master's degree. We've not yet made that pronouncement in South Africa, but I think that that is the right way to go. Yeah. So, Pia, there are, according to an answer recently by Minister of Health, 10 uh, uh, colleges, uh, one in each province, and I think the 10th one is, is, is the military one that is being, is being used to train. Is, is that enough? I mean, you, you come from the system. Uh, this is also then broken down into districts uh, as, as, as sub-training colleges so that the students can be access, able to access uh, these uh, colleges where they are. Is that enough? Well, Tabo, it's definitely not enough, uh, not at all. I mean, if you are sitting with colleges that are still uh, closed, uh, even those that are open, taking a minimal number is not enough, uh, Tabo. That is why we keep on saying that, uh, you know, the critical skills shortage uh, is one of the crises that we have. And uh, if we were to be caught by a second pandemic as we speak, Tabo, I can tell you that this country would not cope with another pandemic precisely because of the shortage uh, in nursing uh, and not just only general nurses, but uh, critical skills. I mean, specialist nurses, as we speak, we've got a high level of shortage. So we cannot be comforted by the fact that there are 10. Uh, we need more. Um, in Gauteng alone, um, if, if, if you look at the, at the regions that we have uh, in the province, it's only two regions that uh, uh, have got uh, 
you know, colleges, which is uh, Twade as well as Johannesburg. Uh, so that cannot be enough in such a highly populated province that we know that the health demand, uh, you know, is a lot. But also if you look at the number of academic hospitals that we have, we are not like the Northern Cape where there's one academic hospital. We believe that if we are to increase the number of uh, um, of colleges as well as the intake, we are confident that in Gauteng, for instance, we'll be able to, you know, uh, cope uh, with uh, ensuring that these students would receive, you know, clinical accompaniment as well as clinical placement. So we still need to do more. I mean, uh, uh, 20, I mean, now how many years now into democracy? And if you go to Northern Cape, you find that there's only one nursing college. And that has been throughout our democratic breakthrough, and 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 we don't we don't even have other facilities that produce nurses. So those are concerns that we have, and we think that uh, the snail pace at, at which we are moving at, we have got to get rid of it and uh, allow two processes uh, to happen, so that uh, we know that nursing has been fully professionalized. This table as I've indicated, has assisted us a great deal in terms of dealing with those who have made nursing education their business, those who have made uh, you know, nursing education a commercial subject. I mean, why are they not crying about other health categories and focusing on nursing? And the answer is simple. They have been exploiting many people throughout the years who agree with what uh, Wainit was raising. And uh, they must not cry foul. They must concentrate on their primary business and, and allow processes to unfold. Reflect then on this question, because you, you're engaged with it, and I'll get a right as well to, to, to respond to it, of the under-resourcing of the public sector and how that is contributing to, to, to this poor intake or low-level intake because of the facilities and establishments that are stipulated here that are, are, are nearly not adequate enough, don't have the technology that is required enough, and therefore you, to be unfair, to, to take in a whole lot of students and bring them in there when they will not be able to have the necessary equipment uh, that will help them train. Well, that is brought, uh, that, that challenge is brought precisely uh, because of the anxiety that the Department of Health has in terms of allowing the you know, nursing education to go uh, to the Department of Higher Education precisely because of resources. There's a lot of corruption that happens uh, around the funding uh, in nursing. So we would not be sitting with that type of a situation. I mean, uh, the challenge that is being raised around the issues of resources is not a challenge that will take many years to address. It's a challenge that just requires decision-making to be done and the resources to be allocated, and then we move on. It's, it's not much of a bigger challenge in our view. It's just that people know that they've been, you know, uh, allowing corruption to happen as far as the funding of nursing education is concerned. What do you make of uh, the quality uh, of uh, the education and training of nurses in the country? Does it uh, produce competent practitioners will guarantee the quality and the safety of health care in our facilities? Let's go to WhatsApp and, and take this question. We'll put it to Lerato because it segues nicely into the conversation we are having. Why did they change the running of nursing colleges? Uh, we've never had this problem as retired apartheid time nurses. Uh, you threw the baby out with the bathwater. Nursing is not only theory, in fact, more practical. It's about quality and skills. Okay, reflect on that, uh, Lerato, that uh, we, we, we were maybe too quick to take the training away from the hospitals to the universities. I know Simpure is a university nurse with his degree, but uh, uh, were, were we too quick to, to take the, the training out of the, the, the hospitals to universities? And, and maybe that's where we should have left it. Look, we are not taking the training of nursing out of the hospital. Mm. Um, even with the new reforms, we must understand that nursing theory and nursing practice will always remain. And I think if you study the current curriculum, it does not in any way change how nursing has been done. The only difference that must be marked is that nursing education will no longer be under the ambit of health care as it's not their competences, I've explained earlier on. Yeah. But also, we must also not be too nostalgic. We need a professionalized nursing education that allows 
nurses to even fall within not just the CHE or the NKF framework, but also their qualification to be able to, to, to be within the SACA. Mm. But at this current moment, that's not the case. So, so it's so, so, Sorry, let, let, me, let me come here. What, what about the challenges that are being raised around the... I mean, you've already mentioned that uh, enrolled nursing, ancillary nursing, that has pretty much been cut, I think being replaced by general nursing category. So those three levels have, have, have been dismantled. And, and, and some are raising the fact that that's limiting in terms of career options where before you would have this pipeline of uh, uh, enrolled nurses doing two years, ancillary nurses doing one year, and, and, and grow and so forth and so forth. So this reform, in a sense, contributing to to the shortages and the lack of nursing in the system? Okay, not, not necessarily. So the regulation that is in the new reform, which would be R169, is still very much at that level where you would mesh it up very nicely with what we used to call auxiliary nursing. The R171 would tend, the one that we're saying it's replacing the enrolled, would be the general nurse. And the one that would be studied at the university, which is R174, would then be the, 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 the degree, the, the bachelor's degree. So now let's not, I think, uh, the, the, the narrative that is being pandered out there is that there's a complete overhaul. No, there is no complete overhaul. We need the reforms to accommodate nurses to be under the same mainstream that regulates their counterpart in health, not just in health, all other career parts. And this is a great move. But what we are not promoting is the fact that nursing should remain in the, in the doorsteps of hospitals. No. Like doctors, they go to the hospitals and do their practicals. The, the nurses are going to be able to do the same thing. So let's not um, try and make as if it's literally we've thrown the pain with the bug. There's nothing like that. We just need to be more professionalized. We need the right regulatory bodies, such as CHE, to take over and the, the, the qualifications to be under the correct framework in, in line with SACA. And that's it. Yeah. Prof, we've stopped hospitals from having their own nursing colleges. How true is that as something that is being raised? But also, uh, what I've just put to Lerato, we've now prolonged the study periods towards the nursing qualification uh, by uh, cutting enrolled nurses and auxiliary nursing uh, and uh, really focusing on the registered nurses, which requires uh, students to stay there for four years. So, Taba, that's not entirely um, correct. So um, if you look at the, the private, um, the big, big um, hospital groups in the private sector, for example, they can still continue training, but because all nursing now is in the higher education um, landscape, they have to comply with the provisions of the Council on Higher Education. So we're not taking um, that away from them. The contestation is around the numbers, which, of course, is what the Nursing Council um, is regulating. I think the important thing to understand here is that um, nursing colleges, um, agricultural colleges and the like had no choice but to change because of the changing legislation in higher education. And so for nursing, uh, particularly nursing colleges and nursing schools, there was a, they have to do what we call a double jump from at the Department of Health uh, Governance to Department of Higher Education and Training, uh, in which case the, the Council of Higher Education become, becomes the main quality assurer of programs offered by nursing colleges, nursing schools. Of course, universities have always had the Council of Higher Education as its quality assurer. So for programs in universities, that's not a foreign um, sort of requirement. The, the, you asked earlier about bottlenecks. So the bottleneck issue is around um, the two superpowers, if you like. So for as long as we have the Nursing Act, which empowers the Nursing Council to accreditate an institution, to accredit institutions and programs, and then there's the Higher Education Act, which accredits universities to offer higher education programs, but as long as we have those two legislations um, effective, we will not be able to resolve this looming crisis. So while those two powers are butting heads, it is the prof profession that suffers and, of course, the patients um, that fall under the care of the profession. Yeah. So it, it, the is, is, the, is the Nursing Council dragging its feet on this 
transition and uh, should they be the ones really leading and facilitating this transition uh, from from what i'm hearing there they are saying by 2026 maybe the transition would have happened but up until then we are still going to continue to have this dual kind of situation where we have those who come from higher education and have those who are who are, who are coming from from the the the, 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 the colleges Look, um, it's, it's easy to play, to play the game blame. So the Nursing Council, um, there, there were some legislative features, and I think, uh, for example, the scope of practice, which is very important for us to really design purposeful programs, that was very late, and there were many other um, hitches in the delay around um, declaring colleges as a higher education institutional type. Um, so what the, the Nursing Council did, or the Department of Health, with the Department of Higher Education did, was to come to an agreement, and that, um, that regulation was released at the end of 2019, to say that nursing colleges and nursing schools may now offer uh, programs uh, uh, um, that are deemed higher education programs. So that is only a temporary arrangement. So there are many... Um, can I call them legislative ob obstacles that prevented the Nursing Council from doing what it's supposed to be doing. On the other hand, the Nursing Council blames uh, nursing education institutions, saying that they have been slow in putting their programs forward. Yes, that may be true, but there were also those prohibitions um, and, and confusion in the sector as to who should be leading these processes. And there was an expectation that the Nursing Council as the regulatory body should have stewarded that process far more competently than we, what we have experienced. Yeah. So, Bua, should the Nursing Council have ensured that this transition kept pace with the numbers that we need uh, in, in the nursing profession, newly trained healthcare workers, uh, and the public facilities that we find ourselves uh, having to, to, to uh, capacitate uh, with uh, new healthcare workers? Well, uh, indeed, uh, we, we believe that the Nursing Council could have done better uh, than uh, what it has done because remember that part of the mandate of the Council, uh, is the, it's also there in their motto, is to also look out for public interest. I mean, uh, if you are going to have a challenge of a shortage of nurses, you are surely not entirely, you know, looking out for the public interest. So we believe that the Nursing Council as the regulatory body at the time, being aware of these reforms, uh, could have led, uh, uh, you know, better, uh, could have steered the ship better, because ourselves as organizations, we influence, we lobby, and the Nursing Council has got that uh, authority and is also empowered in terms of being the custodians of nursing. So. Uh, they, they, they did not move at the pace that we desire, uh, and that is why today we've got these challenges. However, uh, we are hopeful that, uh, you know, with the professionalization of nesting, we'll be able to take the profession to greater heights and be able to afford the profession the respect that it deserves. Yeah. And uh, 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 those who are saying in the earlier question that you posed to Lerato, who think that uh, probably we have thrown the, you know, the water out with the baby. Um, they must understand that at some point, uh, transition has got to happen because nursing is a profession. This thing of, uh, you know, <clears throat> producing nurses that would not have critical thinking but will just be to us is something that we do not condone. We want nurses that are competent, who are critical thinkers as well, that can solve problems because nurses are independent practitioners. They do not work under doctors. They are not employees of doctors, but they are practitioners in their own right. And I, and I think that all South Africans, everybody, must understand and, co and fully comprehend this. And the, the second reform, Tavo, uh, which I think Lerato will agree with me, is this notion of calling a nurse's sister, sister that uh, <laughs> something that we totally differ with because in terms of the law, we do not have such a category of a sister and so forth. Uh, we must be rightfully addressed in the manner in which we must be addressed. If you are addressing me, I'm Mr. Gada, I'm not Sister Gada. 
and 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 really what we are trying to do is just to do away with this mentality uh, that people have about the profession and we think that right now nursing is on the right path to be professionalized so that it has the dignity that it requires and it is this generation that must ensure that uh, that transformation or agenda is realized now in our lifetime and uh, those who are seniors in the profession we respect their opinion we respect them but they must allow the, for the space to happen and they must allow for the changes and the transformation to happen uh, we are a generation that must be given a space as well to ensure that we bring nursing to be where it is we restore the yeah. dignity of nursing because all these challenges that we have is because of people that do not respect the profession and we are simply calling for respecting for respect in the profession term. We'll, we'll come back and uh, I want you to answer one of the WhatsApp messages that came through, particularly on the question of cost. I know you're talking very strongly around that in the privatization or what you call the commercialization of the nursing profession. We'll take, uh, Simpia, let's, let's take this uh, WhatsApp message on 072-110-584. South African Nursing Council should allow private colleges to train more nurses in, in the process, regulate the fees which are being charged in the private nursing colleges. What do you say to that? Well, I, we totally uh, disagree because, look, Tabo, why are we not uh, having uh, colleges that are training doctors or training lawyers? Uh, you see, Tabo, at some point in one of the colleges in Pretoria, there was a taxi driver that owned a nursing college. And this is what we are trying to get rid of. You must, the people must stop looking at nursing as a form of business. We are dealing with people's lives here. This is a serious profession that requires that the quality of a nurse that you produce is competent, is a critical thinker as well. So if people are not, uh, they, they should understand that there's not going to be any shortcuts here. People must satisfy the criteria as laid out with, by the Council of Higher Education and by the Nursing Council. People must not want to come and take chances and say and think that when they Think of starting a business they are just going to commercialize this profession mm -hmm. we will defend this profession with everything that we have and we don't agree with those sentiments um, and that is why we are saying that let nursing be offered by credible institutions that would have met the criteria and set out and accredited and the fields will be regulated like any other student in this country, those fees will be regulated because, as Lerato pointed it out earlier on, we have got many brothers and sisters that have gone to these so-called uh, private colleges who did courses that do not even exist, uh, where now they've spent exorbitant monies and they cannot find employment anywhere. And these are the things that we are trying to get rid of so that people do not fall victims to these private nursing colleges. If these colleges meet the requirements, it's fine, no problem. But uh, let's not commercialize such a critical uh, profession uh, because uh, we would not want to sleep in a hospital and be treated by a person that uh, is not a critical thinker, that is not going to give you the service that you require. One people who are going to save lives whom we can bet on. And that is why most countries in Europe and so forth are recruiting in South Africa because we've got the ability and the know-how of producing nurses that can compete globally. And that is the standard we want to maintain. Yeah. Speaking of uh, global competitiveness, Lerato, here's a question on WhatsApp around uh, competitive pay. Uh, for nurses and healthcare workers. Uh, this one says, I trained as a nursing educator in 2019, but I can't move to teach because my salary, my salary rather, will be the same. I have three postgraduate diplomas and experience to teach. Everything in nursing is just complicated and all the changes are even more complicated. The educators burn out such huge jobs to teach students with that salary, the same as everybody working uh, in uh, the EC theater and intensive care raise the salary of the educators. Nursing educator there crying out for an increase in the salaries that they are paid. I think that our cry is extremely genuine. It's genuine because all the nursing educators in this country were never subsidized to actually get their degrees. No, even their masters, those who got doctorate, they did that from their meager salary. 
And the government is, and the, and the institutions of nursing education are benefiting directly from that. So you would be a nurse educator teaching students um, a critical uh, advanced diploma and you would be earning less than them, or you would actually, um, even when they qualify, they'd be better off than you. So that already tells you that there's a problem even with a, a reform such as, you know, always these and so forth. But I want to take it a notch higher with that particular question and show you some more and say, majority of nurses who studied from 1986, who did the four-year diploma, that is a historic R425, cannot be admitted in our higher education institutions, particularly universities, so that they can go and specialize today. And this comes as a glitch, and I, I'll call it a glitch, because when these uh, 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 levels are articulated from some, you know, working together with CHP as they are forcing themselves uh, in working together with CHP, it actually tells you a narrative that majority of nurses are excluded from being uh, developed. They are excluded from upskilling themselves. So when you deny critical skills to be upskilled, you actually are saying that the consumers of healthcare must actually suffer. This is something that we have been calling out to say it must be looked at. But also, there's a very critical thing here. The Minister of Health has an obligation to ensure that he amends the, sort of the, the Nursing Act, because that Nursing Act is currently uh, becoming redundant when it comes to nursing education and training, and that is the only hold up that son is, 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 is holding on to with fear life with. Yeah, and yeah. that is what is actually comes so, like in the process. Do, do, that do, is what is putting us on Talk to us, what, what, what is that technicality you're saying that prevents them or limits them from specializing? Currently, all those who have studied um, have been articulated or they've been positioned at level six. Now, this is a big debate within the profession where if you put me on level six, the next level that I can study is level eight. And there is no gap, there is no breach that allows me to go into a post-basic uh, qualification. It then means that I can only continue uh, working as a generalist or as a comprehensive uh, general nurse, and I'm unable then to do an advanced degree or an advanced diploma because there's no existence of uh, currently an approved course that allows me to preach from six and go to a level eight. Oh. Now that, I call it a glitch because if you look at this heavily packed diploma that has been, that a, a majority of the nurses have been put under, even CHE, CHE themselves, when they look at it, they say, oh my God, this was badly done. This was just too much. It's almost like we were training Cuban doctors, in fact, with this thing. But the reality of the matter is we want to now frustrate those who are yeah. at the shop, yeah. we want to facilitate workers so that there is a problem and some remains relevant. And I think for us, it's, it's something that it just doesn't make sense. And it's something that needs to get immediate attention because it has caused an uproar. In fact, I will tell you, on May the 12th, which is Nurses Day, as young nurses in our trade union, we marched to the South African Nursing Council. And in the list of our demands, at the top, it was, we need to allow nurses to be upskilled. The pandemic has exposed the nurses that... It, what we have as a basic uh, qualification is not enough yeah, to understand yeah, all yeah. the medical diseases. Those we serve, they're actually at the back end. Prof, is there rationale as to why there is that gap? Um, yes, uh, it's very clear in the higher education qualifications um, framework um, that you need to um, have a level seven qualification, as Lerato rightfully say, in order to uh, go into postgraduate or what we call post-basic training. So I want to uh, propose two things. The one is that, um, and, and Lerato has already mentioned, that there has been a cooperation agreement between the South African Nursing Council and the Council on Higher Education. A task team had been set up to look at these, what we call articulation problems. Um, and yes, this is definitely one of the things that will um, contribute to critical skill shortages in specialist nurses. Yeah. Now, there have, has been a communique sent out to institutions and two things there. The one is that um, there is an understanding that the nurses with a level six qualification do have the clinical or 
of practical competencies in place, and there is no doubt about that, but that there is a cognitive gap between uh, the, them having a level six versus a level eight qualification. And so what institutions must begin to do is to introduce um, um, short programs, and I know that, that the, the cost factor issue will come up again, but this is there are uh, best practice examples in Africa, globally, where nurses who do not meet the qualification requirement have to then uh, bridge that gap by uh, um, attending a short course to get the considerate number of credits in order to get into a level eight. And that is an important um, consideration, but also something that really will curtail the profession to produce enough specialists. So I you're, would, yeah, yeah, yes, go for it. No, I want to say perhaps, and, and this is really a wild card, the, the, the naming of the qualification should not be a postgraduate qualification. Why, why would it not have been proposed as an advanced diploma in each of those specialties? I mean, that is just something, it's my personal view, because if one looks at the program objectives or outcomes, um, I would argue that they're not even at the level uh, of, of a level eight. And, and that's my personal view. Sipo, as we wrap up the conversation, provincial health budgets are not keeping up with this kind of need and the kind of training that we, we, we need to be doing, uh, but also the kind of remuneration that we need to be paying uh, the, the healthcare professionals as well. Does placing the whole entire thing under national help in any way? Well, uh, uh, it does help it to some extent. Um, so uh, the only thing that is needed, uh, Tabo, is, is, is just the political will um, so that we, we mitigate against these challenges because the issues of budget, is just it just needs a political will. People must understand that these reforms and also increasing spending is an investment for South Africa. It is not an expenditure. And uh, if they look at it uh, with, with that uh, perspective, we believe that we can be able to then uh, achieve, you know, the, 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 the objectives that we, are set, we have set out for ourselves and for the profession. And maybe lastly, Tabo, you know, on the question of the pay, we must put it on record that uh, the reviewal of OSD, of the occupation-specific dispensation, is long overdue. And the nursing profession agrees. The people who are dragging their feet is government, and it is government that must come to the table so we can review uh, the OSD so that we don't have lecturers that are actually responsible for producing nurses uh, running away from education to go and work elsewhere where they are seeking uh, greener pastures. So these challenges, we believe, can be resolved as long as we've got the willingness yeah. Uh, uh, from all stakeholders. All right, let's leave it there. Appreciate your time. Prof. Lerato uh, Nsimpiwe, thank you very much uh, for coming on uh, tonight and helping us uh, in uh, this conversation. Maybe let's close with this uh, WhatsApp message uh, that has come through, a fun one. Uh, hi, Tabo. It's very disturbing to learn that South Africa is facing a nursing shortage crisis. This is not only confined to nursing, but teachers and police as well. The blame is directed on government. Immediately after dispensation, uh, training colleges were closed down as they were regarded as structures of apartheid. Today, we source nurses from India and neighboring countries owing to shortage. This is, this is the doing of our ill-informed leaders who go on politicizing everything uh, the past government established. Regards, Pule there in Gauteng. Well, listen, we have received a host of WhatsApp comments and uh, questions uh, from our viewers uh, that we have not been able to take on air just yet due to time constraints. We will go through them just before 10 p.m. tonight. And that uh, is